Uncle Pierce. Mama said there's only so much fortune a man really needs, and the rest is just for showing off. And because I was a gozillionaire and I liked doing it so much, I cut that grass for free. This is the way I live. Before I start that job, I wanted to get myself a burger. And on the way over here, I'm seeing a ton of people that are homeless. So I went ahead and bought four extra combos, and I'm gonna give them away. I don't know what's going on in their life but that's not for me to judge. This is the type of stuff that I do off camera. I, I get all the time. You wouldn't do stuff if it wasn't on camera. <laughs> 17,000 times. Right. Okay, we get it, yeah. This is the type of stuff that I would do off camera. Because it makes me feel good. I'm doing stuff to help people. To help people. T -t -t Today, Junior! Will make you feel good. It's right here. We got somebody on the side of the road paying him. We're gonna stop, we're gonna get him a burger. Two burgers and fries. I'm gonna put this 20 down on the side so it's not touching any food because that's gross. That'll make their day. And I've got some drinks over there. We'll give them a drink too. Okay? Let's do this a few times. This is fun. There's a lot of people down on their luck in life. And a little bit of love and compassion. And somebody's down on their luck can go very, very long ways. Let's go ahead and do this again. Bag number two. That's cool. Let's go help somebody. It's not very far up the road, too. Just look at this. Have a great day, brother. I can't imagine if I was in that position. I mean, that's the lowest of the low. They've hit rock bottom. <clears throat> and we live in a day and age where there's no compassion for anybody. You know, we see people on the street every day. Every day. And they're in the lowest spot of their life and in the pain and we walked right past them we don't think of it, about anything of it the struggle that they're going and you know it's very easy to write it off and say well they're there because they chose to be or they're there because you know they had this habit or that habit the reality is we're all one mistake away in life from being right where those those people were we should love each other should help each other I'm gonna go cut this crazy yard. I'm excited about that. That's what I love doing is this type of stuff. I feel very lucky that we're starting to make revenue from YouTube and that we're making income. And I feel like I can use that money to do my part to make the world a better place. And without you and without you watching, there's no way I could do that. So if you could, if you would give a thumbs up and leave a comment, that would be incredibly kind. You don't have to. But that is how we get paid and that is how we continue to help other people. And we just let it fuel and everything goes around because of that. So thank you guys for the overwhelming support. What's going on? I'm standing here with Nate. Nate is a real estate agent and one of the things he kind of specializes in is messing with these abandoned houses. Now if you've seen my abandoned houses in the past, none of them were cut for Nate, but this one is. Now you might be like most people and look at the grass and think that's a big issue. For somebody like me, that's petty stuff. I'll come in, knock that down, make it look beautiful. It's no big deal. Now the trees next to the house, I don't know if I'm going to be cutting that down today. I don't know it, it depends on how crazy i get with it just at a glance i don't see much poison ivy which is kind of a blessing normally there's a ton of poison ivy uh, i get a ton of comments right 
everybody tells me I need to do walkthroughs on these lawns and I just want to kind of do that with you a little bit and I want to ask you if you see anything look I'm I'll move it with my foot do you see anything down there it's extremely hard to actually do a walkthrough but doing that hey look there's a huge huge dirt man there probably an anthill or something step on that and get bit but my point is it's almost impossible so the the smart thing to do would be come through with the weed eater knock it down and uh you know go about it that way right which i actually got a new weed eater i'll show you that here in a minute Whew. now we're ready to show it on the channel that's good but knock it down with a weed eater and then from there actually clean it up with the mower if you do it that way then you're not going to run into rocks and boulders and turtles and this and that sorry i took out a turtle in one of my recent videos i can't help that that's a very unfortunate part of the job what i want to let you know is i'm probably not going to go through it with the weed eater first probably just going to hit it with the mower so that's my style i'm not worried about tearing up the ferris in fact i don't know i'm probably going to ride that thing to his death and be done with it all that said let's go ahead and get into it nate what do you think I know already I've been talking to the neighbors and the neighbors are very happy that it's not gonna look like this anymore. So it's a win-win all the way around and we're excited to get to work. I'm not charging them on this job. I'm just gonna knock it down. I enjoy doing this kind of stuff. I know you guys love it. There's several lawn channels that get butt hurt that I go cut stuff and I don't charge for it, but whatever, whatever. Their business bottles, their business model, mine's mine. I enjoy helping people and uh, check this out. I did find a, <laughs> I did find a basketball. Should we throw it back and throw it with the mower? We'll play, uh, we'll play surprise here. We'll find it later. All right, I take care of some tall ones, but I gotta tell you, I think this one might take the record. Uh, this thing is well above roof line and way, way taller than I am. This is Johnson grass and it is, it is a nightmare. We're going to get this taken care of. Let me walk you over here so you can see it. Over here, it looks like maybe there were some deer bedding down or I, I don't have a clue. Maybe kids were playing back here. But look at this. Yeah, buddy. I don't even know what to say there. Tony, like, look, I will stand at the base of this real quick. This ain't no joke. Ooh, buddy. So on this one, I'm just going to be tackling the grass. I might cut a few trees here and there, but I, I doubt it. I got to get out of this backyard. I'm feeling claustrophobic. I might have a panic attack. I ain't never had a panic attack from yards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting this side of that. It'll be all right. This is nothing. Maybe it is. Sometimes I don't know what I get into until I get there. Well, that's pretty much every time. Somebody asked me if I... Uh, ever get in the middle of a project and feel like I bit off more than that chew? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> hey look, it's got these things again. <laughs> I'll give you one more time. Make a wish, okay? You ready? Make a wish. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and then look, it's got all these stick tights. If you've ever run into these, well, these are the things this stick on your hair on your arm and on your shirt all over your clothes i can tell you right now when i am done with this job i'm gonna throw this shirt away i'm not even gonna keep it i'm just gonna throw it away because my wife will have to pick off all the little stick tights and she will be very mad at me so i'll just throw it away and i'll buy another one for five bucks at walmart because that's my style whatever <laughs> all right let's go ahead and get to it I tried, I know I'm not gonna be able to do it. A lot of people ask me how you take the guards off on these. The head, there'll be the spot and key in with the screwdriver. Okay. You can turn this. 
No pulls up, it's left handed threads. Okay? This will come off too, you gotta keep that. We're gonna take this guard off. Guard comes off, this goes back on. Remember, it's got a little key here. This is a left hand thread. And if I say I wanna set you free, don't you know you'll be a mess? Right, there we go. No garden, no balls. I'm gonna have to weed eat twice. If I weed eat first, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the mower and then weed eat. Just set that over there, it'll be fine there. As long as I don't hit it with the mower. We got sandbur stickers too. Luckily, they're not too dry. That's pretty wild in there. I think the best thing to do is take the brush cutter through that section and then, then I can mow it. So let's go ahead and knock that section out.
see how it does. This is pretty thick stuff. Off. That's some thick stuff in there. Could break out the brush blade. Yeah, I hate using those things. Must not have smacked it on there hard enough. Boy, the haters are gonna have something to talk crap on in this one. He doesn't know what he's doing. came out bump cap doesn't work without the spring well that's it that's all we get out of use of this one because i don't have an extra spring with me i'll probably salvage one out of my other trimmer if it fits but this uh doesn't it's got a ratcheting mechanism without that spring it doesn't ratchet so so much for this bad thing we'll have to bring it back in another video and see if it can do something there all right Here's another method I've done. I only do it on the worst of the worst. I'm gonna use the trimmer attachment. I don't have the articulating head, so it's back killer doing this. But, the stock's real woody, it's breaking string off. Yeah, it's whatever. When you feel like giving up, don't. When you're thinking about giving up, don't. When it look like you ain't gonna make it, keep going. When they tell you you can't, come on, man, who are they? When they tell you you're not gonna make it, don't believe them, man. Don't believe them. You got to be relentless. Stay focused. Quitting guarantees the failure. Once you quit, it rules out any chance of succeeding. The mere Waking up every day, putting the next foot in front of the next foot, at least keeps you in the game. Stay focused. But you can choose in the midst of all of this that's going on to be happy in spite of life's challenges. 
See, a lot of us, because of our limited vision of ourselves, a lot of us who begin to focus on problems and enable them to overwhelm us, we begin to think that we have no options. We begin to believe that there's no way out. Stay focused. Well, guess what? There's always a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. We have two primary choices in life. We can either accept conditions as they exist, or we can take the responsibility to change them. See, a lot of people want to exempt themselves from taking responsibility. All they want to do is talk about the problem. Every time you see them, they'll tell you their story over and over and over and over again. Stay focused. No, no. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here. I can get me out of this. And I'm getting out. I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. I'm unstoppable. This will not get me down. You've got to make those kind of declarations to yourself. I'm unstoppable. I have never met anybody who became incredibly successful in any area of their life until they had suffered and sweated and sacrificed and kept their focus and fought through tears and trials and tests. And if you have a dream and you commit to it, it will come to pass. Stay in it. Stay focused. You must have patience and engage in consistent action. We live in a world, ladies and gentlemen, where people want instant gratification. They want it right now. No, it's simple, but it's not easy. It's a system that if you work the system, it works if you work it. But make no mistake about it, it's hard. And you are the determining factor. I'm unstoppable. The people that make it in this world look around for the circumstances that they want and if they can't find them, they create them. It's you that you must take personal responsibility to make it happen. It's hard. No easy is not an option. However, ladies and gentlemen, what you will discover is that it's worth it. Write down five reasons of why it is worth it for you to become a diamond, to experience that level of achievement. What is it that will give you the drive? What is it that will ignite the courage in you to get up and come back again and again and again. How is it that you would be able, what reasons that can tap in to that deep down feeling that goes to your gut, that no matter how many times you get knocked down, that you're coming back. Quitting guarantees the failure. Stay focused.
I'm gonna take the spring out of this trimmer and see if it fits in the other one. If not, I'll just swap the head.
tight squeeze, but I want to see if I can get the Ferris back here. I don't think I've ever gone through anything like this with the Ferris. I'm going to get it back here if I can. If not, I'll have to smack it down with the weed eater and then finish up with the 36. This thing, now that I got it dialed in a little bit, it hammers right through this.
This is a brand new head, brand new unit. This little piece came out, as well as the pump cap popped off with the spring. So that head's out. My other head, I stole the spring from. I do have one more spare, so hopefully it does have the spring in there. But well, that's enough to make me not run that head. I'll go buy another one. I'll give it one more chance, because I've run those in the past. But I've always liked the smaller speed feed head anyways. Maybe I'll find the bump cap and stuff in there, but I doubt it. This thing's brand new. I didn't foresee any issues with that head, so I did not buy spares for that size. That trimmer's dead in the water right now. And, you know, as a contractor, what you don't want is a unit dead in the water, especially if it's brand new. What's going on with that? Dang, look at that spider right there. Check it out. I've been seeing a whole bunch of these. There's my hand to compare it. Yeah, buddy. Hmm. They're all over back here. I'm sure there's snakes and everything else in here. I'm itching like crazy. I know it's not poison ivy, it's just stuff from the yard on me. Anyways, I've got all this to fine tune. That's, there's so much vines and stuff growing in the fence. I'm just going to knock the grass the best I can. That seed pod right there is probably 12 feet high. I mean, there's a house. There's the top of the seed pod right there. So you can tell how high it is. So I swapped this out with the only spring I have. And I think that spring is worn out. Mine's retracting. It's driving me nuts, dude. Some days you don't get a break. I have one more spare in the truck, but I don't know. I mean, who keeps a full inventory of parts in their truck? I might have one in, the, in my glove box, though. This is the cool thing about those speed feeds. They're super easy to string. Oh, 
string retracted again. Finishing up this job is going to be a nightmare. Man, my nostrils are lit up right now from cutting that right there. Woo! All right, my awesome wife is going to Home Depot to get me another bump cap. Not to get me a bump, at, bump cap, but another weed eater head because these are all... The two are worn out, and then this new one, I lost the cap for it. I have no idea where it went, and I don't have a bump cap that fits it. So, in the meantime, I still got stuff to get done. I, I can't fall behind. So, I won't be able to do any finesse as far as, like, getting real close to stuff. But I'm going to take an edger blade, put it on the weed eater, and use it like a brush blade. Should work. We'll, we'll see. This is still good, I just need a new bump cap. And apparently something's not working right on it, but it'll be okay. Now my brush trimmer is an edger. Woo! It's no longer a finesse tool. I should get close. It'll be all right. Should work good. loud I said that t-post I don't even know if you can see it there's a t-post back there
Picked up a new speed feed head. Maybe this one will give me better luck. All right, at this point, I'm starting to get the later half of the day. It's going to get dark soon. This is not the place I want to be parked at at night or even close to night. Uh, it's kind of in the ghetto. Anyways, my wife's hanging out over here. She just got me my Echo Speed Feed. I'm going to uh, go ahead and wrap it up, and then I'll show you the after shots here in just a second. Pretty sure somebody's staying in there. That's all right. They're less fortunate than I am, and I don't judge them one bit. As you can see, it was like I don't know, nine feet high over there. It's down. I didn't get any of this stuff on the side of the house. Unfortunately, I was having a lot of issues on this one. It's common. I have issues. Rachel's here to help me out with that. <laughs> she was the savior of the day, and she got me the uh, new weed eater head, so that helps. But uh, I think he's having another guy coming and knocking down the trees and stuff, which works out perfect. I would have loved to uh, come in here and clear that just so that, you know, it gives it this better finished look. But you saw the before pictures, Rachel. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I think it was nuts. I think it was taller than the house. <laughs> yeah, it really was. Yeah. Now where it was really crazy tall was in the back. Let's go take a quick look. I got sweat in my eye, man. Oh, gosh, that burned. <laughs> Woo, buddy. Where's hey. Did you guys see this? This is your shirt. Yeah. You don't have sweat on your shirt. No. Uh, uh, Thanks, Levi's. <laughs> I got it dirty. I'm sorry. It's burning my eyeballs off. It. Yeah, it's as you can see, kind of smacks you in the face. But yeah, no kidding. Here's a plus side. A little baby nest there. So cute. there's no babies. It's probably been empty since spring. But Rachel loves that stuff. <laughs> she loves when I save the animals. Thank you. A couple years ago, we had a. Uh, it was like four or five rabbits I brought home. Yeah. That was pretty cool. That was cool. And they all popped away out of the tote. Yep. <laughs> yep, we kept it them was alive. a huge tote. And they all hopped out. We I kept them alive it. long enough that they could do their own thing. And then they're like, go on, yep. sucker. <laughs> we got to go explore everything. It oh, was we probably Peter Rabbit and his siblings. We were bottle feeding them, weren't they? Yeah. So they were, yeah, they were real young. We were happy. I do save animals when I can. It is very unfortunate. Yes, every now and then I hit a turtle and... I've hit a rabbit. I hit a dead squirrel once and I was close to a house and it poof, on the house. Oh. And maggots like flew up on my face. All right, this is getting too disgusting. Oh, I never knew Scratch that. It. Yeah, it's oh. disgusting. Wow. Disgusting. Huh. I bet you came home and you were like, I'm going to take a shower. <laughs> Don't kiss me. Well, I had to work for like another seven hours. So. Oh. <laughs> the backyard was like way above the roof line and now it's down. There is a lot of grass clippings, okay? I know that a lot of people on the internet are gonna trip out over this, but look, this is Johnson grass and it's it's basically a weed. It grows really, really high and I was able to mulch it down really fine. 
And so this is actually going to break down. It's not killing the grass. There's no grass to begin with. It's all weeds. And the reality is if you wanted nice turf here, you'd have to completely spray this off and then come in and scrape the top and put sod in or, well, I mean, that's the only route I would suggest. Yeah. It's just so far gone. That's what I would suggest. Completely spraying it off, scraping the ground, bring in new soil, put down sod and boom. You got to get a nice monoculture lawn if that's what you're into. If you're not into monoculture, I would suggest spraying it off and then plant seed. And if you're not into spray, you're out of luck because there's like no way to kill Johnson grass. This stuff is resilient. So I don't know what to tell you. So all you guys in California that are tripping out, I know glyphosate's bad. Can't bash, can't bash a whole steak. <laughs> the few people out there that are against certain things, I understand it. I just choose not to pay attention to it sometimes. I stay in my own bubble. I'm sorry. All right. I'm ruining this. <clears throat> I do that sometimes. <laughs> no. Let's get back up front. Okay. This was a wild one for sure. Wild one. Oh, man. I weed eat a poison ivy. Where? Maybe that's why I'm itchy. Oh, gosh. I hope not. I'm good. I'm good. Hey, how'd you like that one? Pretty fun. Pretty wild. Pretty crazy. Didn't go as planned. Stuff was breaking down. But that's all right i just want to let you guys know you can support me on continuing to do this wild and crazy stuff and you know helping people out and doing the uh, donation cuts all you gotta do is give us a thumbs up and subscribe it really goes a long ways to helping boy does this one look different when that grass was at the roof line now he's gonna have another guy come in and cut all this stuff down because that's some work what i did was some work but that's that's a lot of work anyways i hope you enjoyed these after shots i'll see you in the next one I wanna write a song so bad A pretty, 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 pretty song of